Texas school district bans the Bible. What? Plot twist. In a plot twist, amidst an ongoing nationwide moral panic and book banning spree, it looks like the Bible itself is now up on the chopping block in the Keller Independent School District, or KISD, in the U.S. state of Texas. A formal assessment conducted by PEN America between July 2021 and March 2022 pointed out that 86 school districts out of 26 states had banned certain books. Most of the books were for, that were forbidden had themes of sexuality and racism. The KISD ordered 41 books to be reviewed under a new policy. A graphic novel adaptation of Anne Frank's Diary, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, and The Bible were some of the titles pulled off of the shelf ahead of the review. These books, among others, are being quote-unquote challenged and have been ordered to be pulled from the shelves while they are under review to see if they comply with new policies. According to a district spokesperson, the Bible was added to the list after a parent questioned the Christian scripture. According to the parent, the Bible had, quote, inappropriate content, including sexual content, violence, including R-A-P-E, I'm not saying that word because of YouTube, murder, human sacrifice, misogyny, homophobia, discrimination, and other inappropriate content. First challenge in November 2021, the person withdrew their complaint a month later. The Christian Holy Book was also targeted in February by two additional complaints. One of them stated that the Bible, quote, is a map, is, <laughs> is a map to slavery, insects, incest, sex between donkey and women, misogyny, murder, uh, pedophilia, another red flag word for YouTube. You name it, it's in there, end quote. Another saying, quote, religion doesn't belong in public schools. This book also describes multiple acts of sexuality and violence. In a statement, the school district said all the books included in Tuesday's email have been included in Keller Independent School District's book challenge list over the past year. Books that meet the new guidelines will be returned to the libraries as soon as it is confirmed they comply with the new policy. Well, I mean, at least they're being consistent. I never thought that they, okay, so how does this work? You just like file a complaint and they just pull it up, like they pull it first and then reevaluate and then put it back if it meets the criteria. So as soon as you file a complaint, they just pull out the book. I'm not, okay, so this whole book banning thing, there's a lot of it. So it like varies by district to district overall. Like the, some of the details of it confused me because, like I said, it, there's so much variability within different school districts. Um, but there's kind of a background here. So there was an effort to pull a bunch of these books before. And so here's a quote from Vice. Essentially, in this case, the books were challenged, then reviewed in a closed door committee vetting process. The books survived that review, but then were further challenged. The district decided to pull all books on the challenge list for the time being. So there, there was like a challenge list. And then there were parents who went through and reviewed everything, including the diary of freaking Anne Frank, and said, you know what, we read this, we reviewed it, we said that it's fine. Basically, the school district came back to them and said, <laughs> um, this is a quote from a, a, te a parent that was involved with this. Quote, these books went through the official district established challenge committee process, she said. But because they all passed the committee process, our extreme Christian nationalist school board decided the process was rigged. Sound familiar? I served on the committee for the Diary of Anne Frank graphic novel. The person who challenged the book didn't even show up to defend their position. But now the book is pulled. So they went through, they were challenged, they were reviewed. The school okay, district, the school strange. board was then like, actually, you came to the wrong result. We're going to challenge them and pull them again. So they're really into pulling off Anne Frank. Yeah. But, okay, and so but, that's a whole so, other but, side of this story that set the Jewish okay. community on high alarm. Yes. But like, okay, so if, I mean, if that's their standards for pulling books off, now if you go through the same procedures, the Bible should be easily pulled off the shelves. Like the Bible, like, based on yes. the standards, like, if they want the Bible to remain, they just have to change the standards. Like with the current standards, the Bible doesn't make it by miles. Like it's like way past the red line of what they're considering to be not acceptable. I know, but if they change their standards and they're not going to be able to censor 
all the LGBTQ oh, the authors that they're fear mongering over. I know. So you either, I mean, if you want to, I think they they kind of have to be consistent. Like they cannot like make exceptions, right? So they're kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? You could well, either have the Bible and all these other books, or if you want to introduce any standards that gets these other books pulled off, the Bible <laughs> leads the Bible is like the most problematic one. Right, so I don't know what they're gonna do. Like they're kind of stuck. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. It's so stupid. That... It's so st yeah. stupid. This whole book banning thing drives me crazy. Armin, I was thinking about this today. Okay, as someone who grew up in a conservative family that was extremely controlling of the information in my environment, and um, overly protective, overly sheltered me. Like, I know how that was detrimental to me as a person, right? And so, basically, I was thinking about there are so many people who have gone through that experience, particularly in places in, like Texas. And I was thinking if I was a parent in Texas and this was going on in my public schools where I was trying to send my child I would be losing my mind because I was like, it's one thing if you want to have this informational control over your own child. Okay. But now you are taking your standards and you're enforcing it on my child and therefore my family. You have no business doing that. Stay in your lane. Yeah. Oh I, my God. Uh, I would be going crazy. But also, to me, also suggests how homophobic or transphobic or all the other things these people are, because yeah. they they would they would potentially be. I think they would potentially be willing to sacrifice their own Bible if it means people are not going to get exposed to LGBT material or anything sex positive like that. You know what I mean? Honestly, I think they possible. were like. I like, you know what? We could just show, honestly, we could just show them the Bible at home. <laughs> I think they might, they might be, I think their homophobia is even stronger than their Christianity. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know. But I never thought I would ever live to see the day that Texas will be, Texas will be banning the Bible. <laughs> this is beautiful. That's so crazy. So, you know, like I said, they're, they had to pull these titles from the shelves while they do a review and all that stuff. So yeah. they could very well end up back on the shelves because, like I said, there was previously a review and they said, you know what, this is fine. This can be on the shelf. And now they're like, no, you, your decision wasn't good enough. We're doing it again. Mm -hmm. So just as like this back and forth, back and forth. We'll see what the final outcome is. But it's just this is such a waste of time. But just, this is such just a waste remember, of resources. Just remember, in one of the most powerful countries in the world, in one of their most important states, we have government officials, okay, that think Anne Frank is bad for your kids and the Bible is good for your kids. This is the state of things. <laughs> By the way, why, why are they against Anne Frank? Is it, is it like, are they just like, they're just anti-Semitic, aren't they? Like, is this like they're hiding... Yeah, so they ostensibly say that it's because if you read Anne Frank's diary, like she talks about like her blossoming puberty, like her attraction to this boy that she's in hiding with, like there's Aww. themes of like her blossoming sexuality. I think she talks about getting her period and stuff like that. I can't, I, so I believe that, that kind of stuff is in there. Through. So it's also about, I think she talks about maybe masturbating a little bit because she's a young girl. This is normal and it's her freaking yeah. diary. Um, so I think that's kind of why they flag things, but then people are also like, wait a second, this considering wait. a lot of other, they also tried to ban mouse, which is also about the big H. Um, this is just, okay. This is, there's a lot of just, red flags, huge red they're flags. Just trying to, they're revisionist history. I think like, like, the, yeah, the mouse one also is like, you just don't want people to know about the big H. Right. Um, but okay. So if it's because of the things that. And the things that you mentioned, that's actually even more alarming. So you want, like, you you basically want kids not to know about any of this? You don't want kids to know about, you know, healthy ways of expressing their sexuality or, like, being normal for them to talk about their attractions or, like, things that 
women girls go through when they're going through puberty like you want to if you're like if you're willing to get rid of Anne Frank for them to not be exposed to that information that means like you're willing to ex ban anything that has that information so you want them to be in complete uh, information blackout like what the hell like this is unhealthy exactly. this is obvious I, I have a problem with um uh or contention with something Shriyash is saying. So Shriyash is saying, if you want your child to know that you're allowed to do that at your own home, it's not a school's place to make someone lose innocence. It's not making someone lose innocence. This, These are contents or just like books, texts that deal with complicated issues that happen in the real world. These are writings and literatures that examine and look at these things that actually happen. It's not useful to completely shield your child from the existence of these things because they will grow up and they will leave your home and they will be exposed to how ugly this world really is. And when they're exposed to it with no prior knowledge, they will have no tools, no familiarity on how to actually deal with these things, how to look at these things. Maybe think about um, that this happens to other people, that these ugly things do exist, and now they have no framework for how to think about them, how to emotionally digest the things that happened. Speaking from experience, they will be faced with crippling anxiety because they haven't been given these things. Yeah, I, I completely disagree with you, Shayesh, as well. You're saying, like, uh, it's not a school's place to make someone... Okay, first of all, giving this information to um, students is exactly what a school is supposed to do okay the parents are not reliable especially given how religious parents could be and how dogmatic could be an education system is meant as a government's responsibility to make children um equipped with the information and skills that makes them functional in society and being aware of your own sexuality and things that go with that is a very important part of any education and without it it's, it's incomplete and you can't trust parents with them. You have to remember, parents don't own their kids. Parents are not the owners of the kids. Just because it's their kids, that doesn't mean they get to uh, handicap them with uh, with improper information um, for them to fall behind everybody else in society. It's a government's just responsibility to make sure that they don't fall behind. Just just like every government has to make sure that kids like le learn basic math and how to read and write and other necessary skills. This is as foundational and as important if, yeah yeah so shriyash is saying wait it was about sexuality yeah basically in the united states this, this is happening because of a moral panic over supposedly grooming children okay and then shriyash yeah. is saying i guess that opinion came from my regret of from going down the teenage edge lord's path okay but shriyash i think perhaps if you had had an older adult that you could have entrusted with these things that you were curious about and had real conversations that were authentic about what this means in the real world and the consequences of these things it maybe wouldn't have gone down an edgelord path if there had been an adult and a mentor that you can have like real heart to heart conversations with i wish yeah. i had that because I did the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was actually very good, I think. I like how we take the news and then we spin off to, like, we go on a, you know, on commenting mm -hmm. on a wider aspect of things. I, I oh, this is that. such a sweet comment from Shriyash. I'll be a better parent, hopefully. Oh. Aw. Aw. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and this is what this is the takeaway. Thank you, D, for always giving us the moral takeaway. She's saying this teaches empathy. We need more of that. Exactly. Thank you, yeah. D. I feel like she's our live chat mama. Yes, she is. <laughs> By the way, usually people who are concerned about being better parents end up being good parents. Okay. So the fact that, like, I hope I end up being a good parent, I think you're going to be. Like, the fact that you're even thinking about that means that you're going to be very self aware about your parents. <laughs> You, yeah. they, they do they end up being better than most people um you're making an effort <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are people who actually end up making effort yeah hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below
because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.